Hi, it's Wayne from howtofish.com.au and if you want to catch these on these, you need to know how to snell a hook. I'll show you now. Now, what I've got here is a big hook. The thing about it is it's, and what I really like, is very, very fine gauge. So it, it penetrates the fish's mouth very well. It's also very, very good for putting live baits on things like shrimp and things that I would use when I'm going for Murray Cod and other species like you know, sort of larger redfin, golden perch, and saltwater species like snapper and salmon. The thing about it though, it's got this outturned eye. So these, I like the shape of these hooks, but this outturned eye means that if I was to actually tie the line on there with a conventional blood knot, for instance, it would actually hold the hook this way. Now on a beak hook, sometimes you get the, the actual point is parallel to the shank. Sometimes they curve slightly inwards, which means that would be fine. You could actually tie a standard blood knot or an improved blood knot onto a hook like this and the interned eye would actually catch as it exited the fish's mouth. When you've got a parallel point like this, parallel to the shank, then it actually tends to hold away and not pull in quite as well. And that's when you want to be able to put a snell knot on so that it holds it straight in line with your fishing line. So when you strike, it goes into the mouth of the fish, just like a normal J hook would. Now, just for the sake of visibility, I'm using some copolymer line here. The way to tie these is pretty simple. All you're doing is putting the line through the eye of the hook like that, taking it out. Now you need to give yourself plenty of line to play with because you'll be wrapping it around a few times and when you run out of line, it becomes a little difficult. So all I'm doing then is I've taken that through the eye of the hook, okay? Then what I'm doing is I'm taking that back and creating a loop, okay? So all I've done is I've held the line, okay, against the hook, created a loop. The next thing I'll do is I'll start winding this around itself. Now what I usually do is I wind it once, hold that with my finger, and then I continue to wind it afterwards. Now you want to do this probably about seven, eight, even 10 times, because what you're trying to do is bind that tightly. The number of reps creates the strength of this knot. Okay, and I'm trying to run it in a line so it doesn't overlap itself as I run it up the shank. Once you've done that and you've got enough there, you take that line, you put it through the loop that you've created. Now the thing is, you're going to have to pull this line, but what you do is you don't pull it first. What you want to do is pull that line first and use your fingers to do that. And as you can see, as you pull it, it starts to tighten this here. Then you can use that tag to pull tight. Once you've done that, you can see, you can pull it towards the eye of the hook. And it, the great thing about it is it bunches up against the eye and creates a very, very strong hold. The next thing I'll do is take a pair of pliers usually. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure I've tightened that as much as I can, nice and tight. Once I've done that, I've pulled it hard, I'll then test it. Make sure that is nice and strong and not going to come off. Once I've done that, I will then just take that tag off. Right, and then I've got it. And what the great thing is, it actually holds the line and the hook in the same plane. In other words, that hook comes straight off. It doesn't hold off on an angle. Okay, the hook point is parallel to the line. And that's what I want to do.